Overview of Animal Classification Classifying animals helps us understand the origins of the Earth's biodiversity. There are many ways to classify animals. Modern taxonomic schemes take both DNA sequencing and body structures into account, and analyzing them teaches us about evolutionary relationships. One way to gain an appreciation for the many adaptations of life in the animal kingdom is to compare body types. The broadest classification of animal body types is generally invertebrates and vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have a backbone or a spine made of vertebrae, and invertebrates do not have a backbone or spine. More on both classes in the next topic. Animals are eukaryotic and multicellular. As eukaryotic organisms, their cells have nuclei and membrane-bound organisms. Multicellular animals have characteristic body shapes that are adaptive and allow them to move, acquire food, and reproduce. So that's the first big characteristic here. Two, they're heterotrophs. That means they acquire their carbon and energy by taking in food. And most often reproduce sexually, but some are able to re reproduce asexually. This rooted phylogenetic tree is based on molecular data, certainly not appearance data, and you'll see why in a second. The animal kingdom, otherwise known as Kingdom Animalia, is part of the eukaryotic domain. Our most closely related kingdom, fungi, so that's why I'm saying it doesn't really, we don't look like them, but certainly in a molecular level, there's more similarity to fungi to anything else. The animal kingdom contains nine phyla, from chordata up here, which is where humanity lies, down to periphera. This diagram shows five key milestones in evolution that gave rise to animal diversity. For example, all species that evolved after number one have bilateral symmetry. Then, after number two, those are the protostomes. That's where the mouth formed first during development. So where's two? That's over here. So who are we cutting out? Well, two is cutting out Nidaria and Periphera, and also Chordata and Echinodermata. Number three are deuterostomes. That's where the anus formed first. And up here, so there's humanity on top. Four is molting exoskeletons, that's this. And finally, five is spiralia, that's where spiral cleavages occur during early development. And that's all of these right here. The diagram on the following slide shows that the biodiversity of animals alive today was generated during the Cambrian explosion, a period of adaptive radiation which started around 540 million years ago. Before that time, animal body types were limited and dominated by soft bodies with radial symmetry. The diagram is based on fossil data, especially fossils collected from the Burgess Sale in Ontario, Canada. An artist's conception of the Cambrian explosion follows the diagram. At the very top of this diagram, here we are today. We're right over here, Chordata. This is the way past back here. Here's the Cambrian explosion. And all the red lines show, show organisms that evolved from that explosion of diversity. So here's a red, here's red, here's red. So you started off with some very simple things, simple organisms. Then during this period, which was shown by the Burgess Shale, that's where they found a lot of these fossils, diversity just exploded. And this is a little tricky to read on top, but if you turn sideways, you can see the various phyla that exist today. There are many great artist renderings of the Cambrian explosion. So if you just go ahead and Google on this, there's some amazing pictures. Now, of course, we don't really know what they look like, but these are artists' imagination based on the fossil records. These all have soft bodies, right, so no hard skeletons, and bilateral symmetry, which means left and right side of something looks the same. So if you just look at this, if you were to split it down the middle, this proposed organism, you see one side is a mirror image of the other. So there really are some great pictures on this, so please do check, that, check it out on the uh, web. 
This is a table of what animals you can expect in the various phyla. And this time, humanity is down here, along with the rest of the mammals and birds, fish, and reptiles. Going all the way up here, periphera, those are the sponges. So this is a nice diagram to look and see where your favorite creatures fit. The most primitive animals are the sponges that lack tissue types and symmetry. They are essentially porous bags made of a few cell types in a jelly-like substance made mainly of collagen. It is worth noting that collagen is the most common protein in our bodies also. All of the other types of animals show radial symmetry, right, where you start at a centerpiece and then you have everybody coming out like that, or bilateral symmetry right here as well as distinct specialized tissues.